This video is sponsored by Nybor's Tome of Enchanted Weapons. If you spend some time on the D&D Online community, something that you'll hear a lot of folks griping about is the game being bounced around six to eight encounters per day. The complaints take a couple of forms, but it's usually along the lines of, my players don't get through that many, how do I rebalance? And I get why, the numbers part of D&D is essentially a resource management game. Spell slots, hit points, extraordinary abilities that recharge after X amount of time. The tactical part of the game for the players is, how do I overcome this challenge and still have enough juice to face what's coming next? I think the root cause of this issue is despite the 800 plus pages of the core rulebooks, they never once tell DMs how to actually run the game. Nothing in there says if you do X, Y, and Z, your experience will be this. On one hand, the game's designed intentionally to be flexible, as to allow for a variety of play styles. It's not shoehorning DMs into any one campaign type. But the cost seems to be not giving any guidance at all. As a result, DMs are so lost, so desperate for something to tell them what to do, they are clinging to this one little shred, these barely six sentences in the DMG, hoping they'll give them some wisdom on how to run their games. But I'm gonna tell you, if encounters per day were really that important to the play experience, it would have received more attention. There are things in the game that the players value way more than when they run out of their cool abilities. Nevertheless, because folks are so fixated on the six to eight encounters per day thing, and because I do adjust some things in the game to compensate for how many encounters I run, it is kind of worth talking about. But before we get to my adjustments, I wanna talk about some other misconceptions folks have about this. Folks are making claims and adjustments and bemoaning a system while, in my estimate, still holding onto a mistaken mindset about what's going on. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some misconceptions about encounters per day, we're gonna talk about what the real problems are, and then I'm gonna give my homebrew rules that I think really bring the game back in line with how, I guess, the majority of DMs run their table. The first misconception is one of those times where I'm gonna tell you different than everybody else. Sort of the hallmark of this channel, right? So you have heard it said, well, not all encounters are combat, but I say unto you, in this context, it doesn't matter. Yes, of course, traps and obstacles can consume resource and so might the occasional social interaction. But if you actually take the time to read the text you're debating, they are clearly talking about medium and hard encounters. Those are combat. Talking to the Duke doesn't have a CR attached and puzzles don't have an XP value. A careful reading of the text tells you that encounters per day is synonymous with XP per day. The rules for non-combat experience points, including resource consuming traps, are entirely optional and discretionary. It's not something the system relies on or expects. The next time you look at a published adventure, go ahead and check this out. All the environmental encounters and traps do not have XP values attached. Another common misconception is that you somehow need six to eight encounters per day, but nowhere in our little paragraph does it say that. It's not imperative to the play experience. All it's saying is that's how long you can expect your adventurers to go before they run out of resources. The six to eight encounters is an observation, not a mandate. That is, the playtesters played the game as written and then counted how many encounters they had before they felt like they needed to take a long rest. The last misconception is that the game is somehow designed with six to eight encounters in mind. That is, the designers wanted six to eight encounters and then built the class features around this premise. But that's not what happened. If you're curious to see how the designers actually balance the classes, I'll link the most important video no one's ever watched in the description, below the like and subscribe buttons. But that video will tell you class design is not about spreading damage out over encounters per day. The classes were balanced against people's perceptions of them against each other, not on some adventuring standard. Okay. So I'm not pointing these things out to shut down conversations about non-combat XP or how to adjust the difficulty for combats to tap out your characters, but rather because I think if we're gonna have a conversation about the rules, it needs to be about the rules text itself. I wanna talk about encounter pacing, but I wanna do it from a place of clarity and common understanding. Now that we're on the same page about what the system actually expects, we can talk about the actual problems. And of course I find that there are some, or else I wouldn't try to homebrew my way out of it. To start with, if everybody is so unnerved by this idea of six to eight encounters, I think it's worth exploring how we ended up with this model to begin with. It has a lot to do with the type of adventures that were being play tested. Besides whatever homebrew campaigns were running, the adventures that were sent out with the D&D Next playtest, the Caves of Chaos, Blinged in Stone against the Slave Lords, were all really heavy dungeon crawls. To be fair, dungeon crawls make excellent playtest material because you can pack a whole lot of game elements concisely together in one package. And I will tell you, as someone who has run a lot of dungeon crawls, the whole six to eight encounters thing really does measure up. However, the general population aren't running mega dungeons exclusively. People like sprawling, world-spanning campaigns. And that difference in the baseline narrative assumption naturally changes the pace of in-world encounter frequency. Your number of fights per session might stay the same, but if you're traveling over world rather than kicking down door after door, you're gonna have a lower fight per day ratio, which of course matters when your resources for fighting are measured in uses per day. This is especially noticeable in full casters who can damage dump dice 
the high level spell versus mostly martial classes who rely on more sustainable damage output. And this point is further evinced by the math itself. In my homebrew video, I talked about how you can find the wizard's virtual damage. And if you can compare that, the absolute damage output of all their spell slots versus the rogue's sneak attack, you can find it's roughly equal to about 11 or 12 sneak attacks or three to four encounters per day. The other thing that sort of lands us in trouble is folks love their set piece boss fights. They want to slay the dragon. DMs enjoy planning and executing fights against deadly foes and players love to alpha strike and go Nova. And frankly, this does lead to some problems in the math if you only try to run a single encounter per day. CR is a bundle of many different stats, including hit points and damage output. So the common scenario is a monster that has enough hit points to withstand a party going Nova on it is also likely powerful enough to down a party member with a single blow. And that's kind of unsatisfying. Nobody wants to be knocked out the first round of the only fight. I think those two things are pretty much the issues folks have with encounters per day. The fact that large parts of the campaign seem to eschew the encounter gauntlet typically found in a dungeon. And that's really fashionable for DMs to run these big boss fights, which typically favor long rest recharge classes and can be way too swingy for a set piece encounter. Like Mike Shea, I am a lazy dungeon master. I run most of my sessions with less than an hour of prep. I never really take the time to balance encounters, but I do use CR as a rough estimate of a monster's power. So in that light, I want to find the easiest way to run fewer encounters per day while still using CR as a good gauge. House rule number one is I run monsters at max HP. The gist of it is this, if we are running fewer encounters per day, we still need a sink for all that damage output the system is expecting. But we don't want to necessarily throw overly high CR creatures because the player's ability to absorb damage is largely the same. The number of encounters per day is independent of the character's hit point maximum, their attack bonus, and how many actions they have per round and hence their ability to heal a downed character. Running monsters at max HP lets you rely on the CR for the monster's offensive balance, while essentially taking more resources from the players to compensate for fewer rounds of combat per day. But wait, you say, while it addresses the total damage output from the party, it does nothing to address the gap between long rest recharge casters and shortened day martial characters. Well, that brings us to rule number two. I remove critical hits from spells. If the issue in your encounters per day is that full casters can out damage the marshals, then this is a pretty easy way to bring them back in line. Now, typically I think it's bad form for the DM to nerf the player's abilities. They should usually be making adjustments on their side of the screen, but I really like this rule. And to be honest, I've never heard an objection from a player. Even the players who are playing full casters admit it's pretty sensible given our encounter pacing. And more than the raw math, I think a big impact of this is psychological. Remember, player satisfaction is largely driven by perception rather than bookkeeping. Now critical hits are something special to the martial attack, which personally I think is a lot more intuitive anyway. My last homebrew rule is strictly a meta rule, meaning that it only exists to serve a game need rather than a story need. And unlike the others, it's situational, it only comes into play sometimes. I don't allow long rests on overland travel. If the players are trekking across the wilds, they cannot get the benefit of a long rest until they reach their destination. This means that overland travel encounters are faced with depleted resources and adds to the feeling of a long and arduous journey. Of course, this doesn't make any literal sense. Why would walking through the woods suddenly deprive the players of the ability to meditate or bind their wounds? How I explain away that part of the fiction is I tell the players that I'm not having the benefits of a long rest in between these encounters that are, you know, days apart, is that it represents the trials and tasks they've overcome that very day. Yeah, that's it. That's the video, folks. Uh, the exploration one is coming soon. I just felt really inspired, but I'm actually really excited to tell you about this video sponsor, Nybor's Tome of Enchanted Weapons. This is a fantastic product. It has everything you could ever want to make enchanted weapons. The art and layout are really great and coming in at over 50 pages, it's a whopper. Gives you rules and guidelines of how many work days it could take you to find the recipe for a particular magic item to make. Gives you price points, days to make them, and it gives you a whole bunch of different ways to make multi-enchanted weapons and naming schemes for them. It's a smorgasbord of different properties you can pick and choose, each with really evocative names to make custom weapons. For example, you can make the Duelist Shadow Sword of Slain, and each one of those uh, adjectives has its own property attached to it. Really cool stuff. Galdor's Gazetteer is coming. The latest playtest packet is in the description. And speaking of the description, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have anything to say about my thought process on encounters per day, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Mm -hmm.